Hello everybody, it's me Jones OMJ here. Pittsburgh, like most Rust Belt cities, has seen a rise and fall throughout its history. It rose during the industrial age in the US, becoming a popular place for steel manufacturing, and it fell during deindustrialization in the US in the late 20th century. Recently, the city of Pittsburgh is starting to rise again, with some tech and finance companies moving in to replace the factories, and people moving to the city for its low cost of living and beautiful surrounding nature. As a result, demand for air travel is starting to increase again for the city, so a major renovation project has been ongoing at Pittsburgh International Airport to update the airport. This is Pittsburgh Airport's $1.39 billion reconstruction project. Before we begin, make sure you are subscribed with the notification bell on so you can stay up to date on the latest architecture projects and statistics. Pittsburgh International Airport is located in Moon Township, which prior to World War II was mostly a rural agricultural area. It was not considered a suburb of downtown Pittsburgh as it was too distant, but this would make it a great site for the future airport. Around 1940, the federal government, through the Works Progress Administration, determined that the Pittsburgh area needed a military airport to defend the industrial wealth of the area and to provide a training base and stopover facility. The agricultural expanses of Moon Township were attractive to airport planners in the city due to the abundance of open land. The Civil Aeronautics Administration proposed $2.6 million to the county for a $6 million field in August of 1941. The county bought the Bell Farm, and federal agencies began construction of the runways on April 20, 1942, after the U.S. entered World War II. In 1944, Allegheny County officials proposed to expand the military airport with the addition of a commercial passenger terminal to relieve the Allegheny County Airport, which was built in 1926 and was becoming too small. Ground was broken on a new passenger terminal on July 18, 1946. The new terminal costed $33 million and was built entirely by Pittsburgh area companies. The new airport, named Greater Pittsburgh Airport, opened on May 31, 1952, with the first flight taking place on June 3, 1952. The airport would later add International to the name in 1972, upon completion of the International Arrivals Building. The first five airlines at the Greater Pittsburgh Airport were TWA, Capital Airlines, Northwest, All-American, and Eastern Airlines. TWA was first to establish a hub at Pittsburgh, and tried out some transatlantic flights to London and Glasgow, but they unfortunately didn't work out. Later on, US Airways established a hub at Pittsburgh, and they started transatlantic flights to Frankfurt. US Airways would then grow at Pittsburgh to become the dominant carrier at the airport. In 1987, Greater Pittsburgh Airport underwent a billion dollar expansion, which expanded the airport into its current design, with an X-shaped terminal featuring an air mall in the center and connected to the land side terminal with underground people movers. However, things at the airport went south during the 2000s. The September 11 attacks in 2001 caused the number of passengers flying to diminish, which greatly affected traffic in many airports including Pittsburgh. Combine this with the high operation costs at the airport, and US Airways later de-hubbed Pittsburgh, shifting operations to Philadelphia and Charlotte. This ended up not all being bad news though, since other airlines have now had a chance to grow their presence in Pittsburgh. In 2015, Southwest Airlines was looking to expand in Pittsburgh and possibly designating it as a focus city. Ultra low cost carriers like Allegiant, Frontier, and Spirit have also started service here and have done pretty well. As Pittsburgh International Airport continues to evolve, the airport is looking to simplify the design to make it easier to get in and out, and provide a great experience for passengers and airlines. As mentioned earlier, Pittsburgh International Airport's current design features an X-shaped terminal that is connected to the land side terminal by an underground people mover. This design, while it works, is not very efficient and is kind of unnecessary since Pittsburgh doesn't feature multiple satellite concourses like other airports with underground people movers. To simplify the airport, a new land side portion will be added to the west side of the X-shaped terminal, making it much quicker and easier to get from check-in to your gate. The new land side portion will also feature new outdoor areas that will offer great views for plane spotting. The terminal will also incorporate the nature aspect of Pittsburgh with plenty of trees and greenery inside. The existing air mall and gate areas also receive some slight updates to freshen them up, blending the old framework with a new, more modern design. Here are some renderings of the new airport.
Overall, I think it looks nice, simple, and pleasant. In conclusion, Pittsburgh International Airport is changing from a dominant hub to a more leisure-oriented airport. This reconstruction project will make it easier to navigate around the airport while bringing it into the 21st century. Be sure to let me know what you think of Pittsburgh Airport's reconstruction project. Do you like it or dislike it, and why? Thanks a lot for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next video.